Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP's son fights back against his bully and gives his bully a broken nose. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash confessions. I've done almost everything I can regarding my son's bullying. I've contacted the parents, I contacted the school. The parents basically blew me off and told me that it's just kids being kids, and the school pretended to care, but didn't do anything in their power to actually stop it. I've asked my son plenty of times if he wanted to switch schools. He always said no because he doesn't want to leave his friends. I can understand that considering he's had a rough go ever since he started school. He's been diagnosed with autism and ADHD, so it's really hard for him to make friends. This little prick has been bullying my son for years, but lately it's gotten much worse. He's been shoving my son in the halls and lunch line, causing him to fall many times. And he calls him things like, R word and slow. The bully used to pick my son up by his backpack and toss him to the ground before he had a growth spurt, but now my boy is taller than most of the kids in his fifth grade class. Still, my son doesn't know how to stick up for himself. My wife has always encouraged our son to kill them with kindness, but it has never worked in his favor. I've told him repeatedly for the past year that he needs to stand up for himself and fight back. Yesterday, he came home crying, and it just broke my heart to see how much pain he was in. I wasn't mean to him, but I was very stern and told him that if he didn't fight back the next time, I was going to take him out of school whether he liked it or not. Well, today, I got a call from my wife after work, and she told me what had happened. Our son was on his way to lunch, and he got shoved to the ground, causing his knees to get a bit bruised. Then, my son got up and left hook the bully right in the face, causing his nose to immediately bleed. My son said the boy started to cry, and he even felt kind of bad. He has a heart of gold. The bully's parents have contacted us. They're threatening to sue, and they said their kid's nose is broken. My wife is mad at me because I've been over the moon ever since. I don't condone violence, but in this situation, something had to be done. Anyone who thinks otherwise hasn't seen the pain that little punk has caused for my son. If his parents didn't want it to come to this, then they should have taken it more seriously when I told him how much of a big butthole their kid is. I had my fair share of bullies as a kid, and I never did anything about it. I'm glad that I'm raising a son who's much tougher than I was. I hope this has taught him to never be afraid to stick up for himself. I'm a very proud dad today. Then, two days later, OP posted an update. My wife has been in contact with the parents, and she suggested that I stay out of it considering my short temper, which is probably for the best. It seems like my wife is handling it well, and she thinks that they're not going to try to sue, which is good. But I'd be lying if I said that a part of me wouldn't love to whip their butts in court. We're not too well off financially, and I know that stopping here at a broken nose is probably the best option. I saw a lot of comments here saying that I should reward my son for what he did. So, last night, I bought him a video game he's been asking for and ordered pizza. It's not Disney World, but it is what I could afford to do. There's been a shift in his overall mood, and he even told me that he can't wait to go back to school Thursday. It seems the situation has given him a confidence boost, and I am loving it. This update might be a bit boring, but that's all I have. Thanks again for all the kind words you people have had for both me and my son. Appreciate it. Yeah, unfortunately, violence is not the best way to solve problems, but sometimes it's the only way to solve problems. OP did everything he was supposed to do. He contacted the parents, contacted the school, tried the killing with kindness route. At that point, the only option is to fight back, so I don't understand why the wife is mad at OP. What would she prefer? That her kid just keeps getting bullied? That he has self-esteem and image issues for his entire life? OP, I think you've done a good job as a parent. The only thing you forgot to do is when the parents of the bully called you, you should have said, What do you mean? It's just kids being kids. Am I the butthole for boarding the plane and leaving without my wife? I'm a 47-year-old man and my wife is 43. We have a 21-year-old daughter who goes to college out of state. We'll call my wife Meg and my daughter Jess. Jess is in her junior year of college. Over the summer, she was employed by her university and was able to stay in the dorms. After summer, she was moving out of the dorms into her own apartment off campus. Meg and I live pretty far away from Jess. We usually go visit Jess a couple of times throughout the semester, typically parents weekend and move out day. She also comes home during the holidays. Let me start by saying that traveling with my wife is not a great experience. 
I'm very type A. I like to have everything organized and make sure that we get to where we need to be early, especially when traveling. My wife is the opposite, very go with the flow, and we'll get there when we get there. I do my best to meet in the middle, but not when traveling by plane. Last year, during parents weekend, Meg and I were going to fly out to see Jess. Our flight was at 10am. Our airport isn't huge, but it's not a tiny airport either. I told my wife that we needed to be at the airport 90 minutes early, and we live about 30 minutes from the airport. This being said, I wanted to leave at the very latest by 8, since we would also need to park and walk a little bit. I, of course, wake up at 6 to make sure everything was ready and accounted for. My wife does not like to get up early. I attempted to wake her up 5 times before she eventually got up at 7.40, then wanted me to make coffee, shower, and eat a bowl of cereal. Let's just say that we didn't leave the house until 9. It ended up being busier at the airport than normal, and it took us so long to get through security that we missed our flight. Rightly so, the airline refused to refund our tickets. We were able to get new tickets, but not until the next day, and we missed Friday afternoon and Saturday morning with our daughter. Jess was disappointed to say the least. Fast forward to now. We're flying down for a long weekend to help her move. We have to take one flight from our town to a bigger nearby town, then fly from there to my daughter's college town. Again, it was a long morning of me pushing my wife, getting her to move along. Due to the last airport mishap, I wanted to make sure I told her we needed to leave extra early so that we didn't miss our flight again. We got there on time, with a bit of time to spare, and my wife was annoyed. She just kept ranting about how now we have to sit and wait for 45 minutes before they can start boarding. We took our first flight and landed in the connecting city at a much larger airport. We only had a one hour layover. We got off the plane at 9.15 and our next plane started boarding at 9.40. We had to take multiple rails to get from where we landed to our terminal. We got to our terminal and we had about 15 minutes until our plane was set to board. Then my wife tells me that she wants to get coffee. There was a little market next to our terminal that sold hot food and coffee. I asked if she wanted me to grab that for her, and she said, No, I went Starbucks. Well, Starbucks was a rail ride away with a little bit of a walk. I told her that we couldn't do this. We didn't have enough time. She stated that we did have enough time, and if I wouldn't go, then she would go by herself. I tried to discourage her, but she was determined. She walked away, at a brisk pace for her, and said that she would be back in time. Fifteen minutes went by, and she was nowhere to be seen. They started calling boarding groups. I called my wife hoping that she was nearby, but she didn't answer. They called a few other groups, then called ours. In a panic, I called my wife again three times, and finally on the last call she answered and said that she was on her way. She said that Starbucks had a long line and she had to wait a bit. I told her they were almost done with boarding and she needed to hurry up. I waited by the gate, but the attendant said they would need to shut the gate in two minutes. I waited and waited, but she didn't show up. The attendant asked if I wanted to board, otherwise she was closing the gate. I tried to plead with her to wait a couple of minutes, but she insisted that she couldn't, so I boarded the plane. A few minutes later, my wife calls me saying the attendant won't let her on, and they've already removed the boarding ramp at that point. She told me that I had to tell them to let me off the plane so I could be with her, but I said no. I told her that it's not fair for us to do this to Jess again. I said I told you we don't have enough time, but you decided to go anyways. I told her to purchase a new ticket for the next flight, and I would see her when she arrives. When she eventually got to Jess's school, she seemed unbothered by the whole situation. She didn't even really want to talk about it. I thought maybe she realized it was her fault and just wanted to drop it. Boy was I wrong. We're now home, and she hasn't talked to me since the trip over a week ago and is insisting that I'm the butthole. So, am I the butthole? Also, OP adds in an edit that Jess is not his wife's biological daughter. She's her stepdaughter. OP also clarifies that his wife and his daughter don't have the best of relationships. Then, five days later, OP posted an update. My wife finally started talking to me again. When she did, I told her that I wanted to have a conversation about the situation, but I wanted to give it a couple of days for emotions to settle down. Some of the comments here gave me a great idea, and I wanted to see what she thought about it. For all future trips, I'll have my tickets and she'll have hers. 
I typically drive to the airport and leave my car in one of those pay lots, so I would drive myself and she could take an Uber. She'll have all the freedom she wants to do what she wants, but it's up to her to arrive on time and board the plane. I let her know that it was starting to feel like I needed to keep track of both of us. I phrased it in a way to make it sound like I didn't want to be controlling over her and let her manage her own time. She wasn't happy about this, but reluctantly agreed. Now to the bigger issue that I didn't realize we even had until reading the comments of this post. Call me oblivious, but I never really thought that there was any issue between Meg and Jess. After talking to my wife, she wouldn't admit to any issues and stated that she would never intentionally delay a flight so that we couldn't see our daughter, and she acted offended that I would even ask such a thing. If that was her actual purpose, I don't think I'd be able to prove it, but it'll be at the forefront of my mind in the future. After talking to Meg and Jess, we decided on the following. Meg and I will be visiting Jess on Parents Weekend, but I will be attending Father's Weekend from now on, and I'll be attending by myself to get some alone time with Jess. Jess seemed very excited, and surprisingly, Meg didn't seem to have an issue with that this time. OP, your wife is grossly incompetent and honestly kind of stupid. That or she's intentionally sabotaging your time with your daughter, which is just malicious. I guess we could say all's well that ends well, but I'm still bothered by the fact that this woman did something wrong, sabotaged your trip twice, and then when you get home gives you the cold shoulder for an entire week? Where's the responsibility? Where's the accountability? Opie has to be extra careful to phrase what he says to her so it doesn't sound like he's controlling her. Meanwhile, Opie didn't mention anywhere that she apologized to him or Jess. So clearly, OP's wife is the type of woman who never takes accountability. Am I the butthole for not inviting any of my siblings to my wedding? So I'm a 23-year-old woman, and I'm getting married in a few months. I have significantly older siblings, a 34-year-old sister, a 36-year-old brother, and two 38-year-old brothers. All of them are now married, and since I was a teen when they got married, and since they all had child-free weddings, I wasn't invited to any of their weddings. My oldest sibling first had a child-free wedding, and then the others decided to follow. When my oldest brother got married, I was 10, so sure, I kind of get not inviting me. But I was still extremely upset. My oldest brother got married to a woman I really love, and I can't even witness it? My other brother got married when I was 12, so again, sure, I get not inviting a 12-year-old. But I was a very well-behaved child, and again, I'm his sibling. My sister got married when I was 15. At first, she didn't want a child-free wedding, but all the family members convinced her because, oh my god, it's so refreshing to be in a wedding where children don't bring havoc. So she decided for the cutoff to be 16 years old. So when I asked if there could be one exception, since I'm 15 and your sister, she said no in a very serious tone. If we make an exception for you, what about the other kids? It's not fair. I got upset and screamed that what's really not fair is I'm not participating in any of my siblings' weddings. My parents- what? My parents got upset with me and grounded me. And lastly, my brother got married when I was 17. At that point, I didn't care. I knew there was going to be a child-free wedding and that, once again, I was not going to get an invite. I didn't ask or beg. My step-cousin, who just turned 18, barely made the cut, but I didn't. Well, as I said, I didn't care. I sent a quick, congrats, and that's it. My parents got furious when I didn't congratulate them. I just ignored them and spent all my time in my room with my now soon-to-be husband. Since I'm getting married, I decided none of them are allowed to be there, since I wasn't allowed to go to their weddings. When they didn't get the invitations, they all came to my house and demanded to know why they didn't get one. I simply explained, you didn't want me in your wedding, so I don't want you in my wedding. I explained how hurt I was that I wasn't able to see any of my siblings get married and that they should experience the same thing. They said that weddings had alcohol, so they didn't want any young, impressionable kids there. Okay, hold on, I gotta stop. That is BS because the cousin was 18, and 18 is not the drinking age, it's 21. So if they were so concerned about alcohol, then why was the 18-year-old allowed to come? The answer is because that's a BS excuse. Okay, sorry, this post is making me a little angry. I just had to point out that hypocrisy. Back to the story. I said all I wanted was to be included in the wedding. I didn't care about the after party. 
My mom then started screaming about how unfair I am and how she wants all of her kids to be together on that beautiful day, which is ironic. But I am not backing down. I firmly believe in not inviting them. Am I the butthole? Then, 10 days later, OP posted an update. We all talked the day after I made the post. I said that the only way I'm going to invite them is if they explain absolutely everything. Otherwise, no invitation. After some weird looks and silence, the truth came out. I'm their cousin? Wait, what? My father's brother was raising me alone and he died so I was raised by my uncle. They don't know who the mother is. I was young, I required a lot of attention, and I wasn't their sibling, so they kind of distanced themselves from me. My brother said that they even hated me sometimes. My parents sat there ashamed for never telling me. My cousin just looked awkward, and I just left. So, me and my fiancé eloped. So, after all the drama, me and my fiancé talked, and we realized that we were doing the whole wedding thing because we both thought the other person wanted it. We're not against the idea of a flashy wedding, but a calm day with just the closest people was closest to our hearts. So we did that, just us and some of our friends. We're gonna keep the money we would have spent on the wedding for our dream country to visit. My parents had the audacity to get angry that there was no celebration, but I don't care to be honest. It was a day for us. Yo, what's going on with these parents? I will say it's generous of them to raise someone else's kid, but if their other kids are all hating on the adopted kid, why not just tell the adopted kid what's going on? Instead, they just let their kids bully OP for literally decades. And it doesn't even make sense! They didn't invite OP because OP's a cousin, but they do invite other cousins? OP, your family's toxic, man. I appreciate they finally told you some facts, but my guess is that they didn't tell you everything. Maybe you're an affair baby, or maybe they do know who the mother is and they hate the mother. I don't know what the case is, but I definitely don't trust your parents in this story. That was our slash best of Redditor updates, and if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.